All right, well, a few months ago, I made a video on my M1161 Growler, uh, talking about the transmission problems that it had, actually the transmission control problems that I had. Um, so this thing originally came with, um, the transmission controller was made by a company called Powertrain Control Solutions, PCS. Um, when I got this growler, the transmission uh, would only go into reverse, you know, had park, reverse, neutral, and then when you put it in drive, it went straight to second gear, and that's the only forward gear you had. That's kind of a fail-safe mode they put into it. So if it has any electrical problems, any valve problems, or whatever, the thing will go into second gear, and you, you can drive off the road. Maybe you can even drive it home, depending on where you're at or what's going on. Um, so that thing was fried. I did a bunch of testing on it. Spent way too much time testing it. Yeah, it was fried. The, the PC board in it was no good. So I was looking online. I was shopping around for TCUs, transmission control units for it. And I found a company that was close close to home, um, a company called Fitech. They make a trans shift controller called a Go Shift uh, Trans Controller. And it's a standalone unit. You just need to hook it up to the output speed on the trans. You hook it up to the, uh, you know, the, the main connector on the transmission. You need power, you need ground, and that's about it. Um, if you could hook up engine RPM, oh, and also throttle, throttle position sensor. If you hook all that up, the thing's supposed to work great. Before I bought it, I called him and I asked him, will this work on the 4L70E, which is the transmission that these growlers have? The tech said, yeah, they work. Yeah, they work on all the 4L type transmissions. So I, I went online to JEGS, I ordered one, shipped it to me right away, I put it in. It was weird, I put it in and it, I had first gear. It was shifting um, first and second gear, just right here around my shop. Just, you know, I've only got a couple acres here, so I wasn't on the road. And I moved the trailer around uh stuff like that just you know messing around with it i go to park it i get it in the next time i get in in the vehicle second gear it's back in fail safe mode um so i'm messing around messing around i'm making phone calls uh, i call fitech and they're closed because of the whole wuhan virus thing but they said you know you can email us uh we'll be slow responding but we can answer your questions i i emailed them took two weeks a guy got back to me i asked him i told him what it was doing and it came out in our we had about two emails go back and forth before he quit responding he quit responding after i asked him i said um will this work on a 4l70e 4l70e has a different valve body it doesn't have the 32 downshift solenoid um that the 4l60s 65s 80s have um they opted for just a valve with a i guess it's a spring-loaded valve that controls that instead of the solenoid so it won't work it senses that that solenoid is gone so it goes into fail safe mode so i've got a buddy that uh from years ago his uh, son was in my boy scout troop um he owns a transmission shop down in san diego so i called david up and uh he came out and helped me with it and what we tried to do we, we pulled the pan off and we pulled the harness out and we tried to take a 4l65 harness and the 32 solenoid and just mount the harness in there leave the solenoid in there but it was just too different and it didn't work so we tried that it, it then we had first and second gear it was really strange but no third and fourth so finally i just said forget it um i looked at uh you know got my receipt and all that stuff went online to jags i filed a thing to return it they returned it it was great they did charge me i had to pay ten dollars to ship it back and they didn't reimburse my shipping the original shipping and they docked me like i don't know must have been a restock fee or something like that but i still got most of my money back and then i did some research and i found a unit uh the easy tcu which funny thing is it's the first one i found when i was looking the only reason i did not for it is because this control unit here seems kind of cheesy and the fight tech seemed really nice it was a very solid unit um plus Fitech was local, so I thought, oh, I'm going to give these guys my business, and they'll be easy to deal with if they're close. But anyways, this easy TCU, they say, yes, it does work for a 4L70E. In fact, when I ordered it, I had to specify that it was the 4L70, and they gave me a different harness for that transmission. So I finally have it all hooked up. Um, it works great, by the way. Uh, this control unit is, I have to say, a, a little cheesy. I wish they would have stepped up their game a little bit on it. Let me turn the key on. You see the screens kind of drop down inside there. It was like that when I got it. But I've got to say, um, it works really good. Um, the controls are a lot more basic than the other one, which is fine because um, all I need to do is set this thing so it'll shift right for me. That's all I care. I'm not going to be setting this thing up for drag races or changing it for different things. It does have a setting. I can hook up a toggle switch. I haven't done it yet to uh, have two different shift modes. Kind of like, like you get the tow haul mode on a pickup truck. 
I can set this for either when I go into low range, so it shifts different when I'm off-roading in low range, or just when I, or just to set it just for tighter shifting, like if I'm going off-roading, I can have it just shift tighter all the time, even if I'm just in two-wheel drive, which that's probably what I'll do. Um, I'm not gonna do a lot of towing with this thing. I might tow a little trailer here or there, but I don't really care about that. Um, but one thing is when I do set it up for that off-roading, you know, I can increase the pump pressure, and I get, I get uh, set how I want the torque over to locked up, um, you know, for how low of an RPM I want it to still be locked up. So if I'm off-roading and I'm rolling down a hill and I'm off the throttle, I can leave the torque converter clutch engaged so that it controls my downhill descent a lot better. So I'm going to set it up for that stuff. Um, and so, well, I set all the other parameters. Uh, one other thing that I did have to, to buy for it, um, this thing, the Scrawler has a fully mechanical diesel engine, right? So there's no tack pickup. But I threw it up on the lift, I reached up around in there, and I, because I was looking to see if they had a, a tack pickup for the old transmission computer, and I found one. And it's mounted on a flywheel. It's a flywheel ring tooth uh, counting type. So I called Easy TCU. They answered the phone right away. Guys are great. And they recommended that I buy this uh, from Dakota Digital. And this thing is great. You could set it to fix speedometer problems. Or you could set it, if you're just building the ride, you can set it, you can buy any speedometer you want. And you can hook up this speedometer um, controller to any type of speedometer you buy or any type of control uh, trigger you buy for it, as well as RPM stuff. And so this actually has, a DSL is for diesel engines, see for diesel. Um, so that existing flywheel tooth counter I had, I was able, that's what these two wires are from right here. I ran these down to it. Um, it, I'm able to utilize that, which is great. I didn't have to add anything um, or use an alternator-based one because that's what they recommended. They said we have a speedometer thing you can you put on your alternator and it counts off the R, uh, R terminal or B terminal or whatever. I don't know, one of the terminals. But this one's better. This is a real accurate way to do it. Basically ground, power, pickup, and one wire going to the TCU. Um, yeah, this is a mess in here. They give you so much extra wiring. You've got plugs here. You can hook it up with paddle shifters. you got all kinds of junk. I'm just going to mount the TCU permanently here. I just have it hanging here. I'm going to mount it permanently up here on rubber, on the rubber, rubber mount. I'll tie all this stuff up out of the way. I've got to mount this on a rubber mount. I'll tie it up. Um, basically, just to help you guys out, if anybody watching wants to install one of these, what I did, they say you have to run the power wires to the battery, the ground wire to the battery. Like, not grounded a block, not grounded here or there. Um, but th to run the wires all the way to the back of the battery in this would be, first of all, it'd be a liability of those wires rubbing out and having issues. Um, what I did, and I found just by poking around in here, this solenoid right here on the top, at least on my mind, check yours because some of these seem to be wired a little differently. This is straight to the battery. This is the 12 volt battery cable on the 12 volt system of the growler. Me hooking it here is exactly like running it to the battery. There's no difference. Now, if I would have taken this wire and run it off some something else that can cause interference in the wiring, that would be different. Apparently, that's what they're afraid of, is it causing interference in it. But this is a direct battery connection, so that's where I got my direct power. This solenoid is awesome because it turns on when, uh, or connects and closes the circuit when you turn the key switch on. So, for my keyed on power, instead of running over to the switch, I ran it right here. So, once you key it on, you've got your constant power and you've got your switch power for the ground i did run it to the block uh right where the cable goes it goes to the to the chassis um if i have problems i'll move it to the battery but i don't think that i'm going to have problems the way that i did that um the cable for the transmission it's right here you just run it down through this hole and if you remove the bolts here for the shift housing there's a hole in the body right down below here with a grommet and you just run and in fact the old wires going to the transmission run through there i pulled those out I left all the old harness in the vehicle just in case I ever have to go back or decide I want to go back to the stock uh, transmission computer. I doubt it, but it's not going to hurt to leave the wires there. Anyways, I ran the new wires right down through that hole, connect it right to the transmission, and you know where the control wires go to the transmission, and then it has the other cable. It went right around to the uh, speedometer pickup, which is on the back of the transmission. Um, you know, and then I connected up this yellow wire for the tack. Uh, tack in module under the hood see this is where I grounded it right here to the engine um, as far as throttle position sensor the throttle position sensor is mounted right down here um, 
on top of the fuel injection unit and it was only put there for the transmission controller so you, um, what i did I, I didn't i would never have the patience to wait for this stuff i didn't want to order the uh, they make an adapter so you can just connect it and plug it in i just i had to cut the wires anyways with the old trans controller so this one here i just cut the, the connector off the end and i connected it straight up to it uh, it's pretty simple you just got to figure out your uh, your ground and your power and your signal wire um i think the white's the signal wire and the black that's power that's ground and that's your signal wire it's pretty simple pretty simple to hook up and then i tested it of course and yeah it works and, and you're able to calibrate the throttle position sensor that's about it it was real simple to install and actually this unit here you can either mount it so you can control it later or monitor things i'm not going to bother i'm just going to it just unplugs right off so once i get it all set then i'm just going to uh take it off and i'll just put it leave it somewhere here in the shop you know um otherwise it's just gonna i don't need it you know it's just gonna get beat up in the in my vehicle so anyways the next time you see this thing all this wiring is gonna be all taped up or you know tied up all my panels my panel here will be back on this will be back on and um we should be good so you know i put out the other video with the other trans controller and if anybody bought that trans controller because of my videos i apologize i'm sorry um send it back you know jeg's website website still says that it works for the 4L70E. Phytech said it did. When I called Phytech, they said that it worked with it. So um, I guess they were, they just didn't know and they were just assuming it did and they wanted it to be field tested or something. Um, anyways, I got my money back. So if you did buy one and it's, you know, it's not, not gonna work for you, send it back. Just tell them this was misrepresented, you know, um, you know, on, on their website or whatever, you know, that, it, that that's what it's for. All right, I wanna thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, please click the like button. Um, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and see more of my content coming down. I've got another video I've just posted on this mounting this uh, MK19 uh, grenade launcher to uh, another guy's M uh, M1161 growler. I've also got a another project in the works. It is a prototype from 1972. It is called an XR311. Give you a little peek of that right there. Um, just keep your eyes out for that video. So if you subscribe, hit the notification bell, you'll be able to, um, you know, get notified when those videos come out. And one more thing I want to talk about, um, a company called Dirt Legal uh, can assist you to get license plates for these things. That's one thing I got to get for this so I can drive it around. Right now, all I can do is take it off road and I can go play with it on my, on my property. But if you want to get a license plate for this, um, I'm already working with them right now, and they can assist you in getting a license plate for your vehicle, getting it street legal, and then you can get insurance on it, and you can drive this thing on the road just like any other car. And if you mention uh, the name Rasmussen, uh, put that in the promo code, and they'll knock 20, 25 bucks off the, uh, the fees that they charge for helping you out. Um, they are very easy to deal with. Uh, they're really responsive, and um, I highly recommend them. So hopefully in about two weeks when the uh, DMV, DMV opens up in... Uh, back up in Utah. It's closed right now because of all the COVID stuff. When it reopens um, in about two weeks, I'll have my license plate for this and I will get to drive this into the store. I'll be able to drive it to the hardware store, wherever I want to go. And that's all thanks to Dirt Legal. So thanks for watching. Have a good day.